Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this third episode of MooCall's 10 Talk series. My name is Stephen Fagan, and I'm head of our operations and design at MooCall. In this episode, obviously, the, the National Plowing Championships, unfortunately, isn't going ahead this year. But as you've probably noticed from our previous um, episodes, that we're taking a, our own approach on it and bringing the exhibitor to the farmer in a slightly different way. This episode is really just understanding the history behind the National Ploughing Championships and how it has evolved over the years and also how, how it has actually changed, I suppose, the likes of companies getting started up and giving them the opportunity to grow and, and bring their brand presence to the public. So the topics for discussion for today's webinar, I'm just going to be taking a look at where it all began actually for the, the Ploughing Championships as a whole. Then we'll be looking at the evolution of the Ploughing Show itself and how it has grown year on year. We'll be taking a look at the exhibitors trade event. So, you know, the amount of new businesses and new types of, of companies that have approached the Ploughing Championships and wanted to be a part of it each year. Um, We'll also be looking at what the Plowing Show is like today. We're also going to talk about what the Plowing Championships has meant for MooCall since launch in 2014. The challenges that the Plowing has obviously faced over the years and the rewards that it does get each year. Um, and finally, we'll be just taking a look at how the agricultural industry benefits from the National Plowing Championships and what it means for Irish agriculture. So where did the National Ploughing Championships all begin? Well, it was all back in the 19th century. There was ploughing competitions known to, to take place throughout different parishes all over the country of Ireland. Um, you know, it was actually in 1931 in a tie in County Kildare where the first National Ploughing Contest actually took place and nine counties actually took part in that. So it actually was a result of an argument between two friends at the time uh, just to see who was the best ploughman. So, Obviously, the, the interest was there and people wanted to, to compete against one another to see who would get that title. From here, the National Ploughing Championship Association was founded due to the contest success each year. The attendance did begin to grow over the years. So I suppose at the very start in, in 1932, there was an attendance of approximately 3,000 people actually at the event itself. But I suppose due to the commercial sector coming into the equation, now you're looking at almost 300,000 people last year's event. Um, the land size that is required has dramatically <laughs> increased over the years. You know, it started out with, as you can see there, a small field of 26 acres. And now due to the amount of people, the amount of traffic, the amount of com companies that actually come to the event each year, we're looking at over 700 acres of land actually required to, to carry out the event. Ten years since the launch back in 1931, the event began to show huge signs of commercial potential. I suppose as the media got more so involved with the competitions, it did start to attract further publicity and manufacturers and traders and even politicians all wanted to be a part of that to get in closer and involved with the public. So how has the National Plowing Championships changed over the years? Well, I suppose it was during the late 1940s, the plowing competition did see a turn from a horse pulled plow to a machine, which is now obviously known as the tractor. Um, in 1955, Anna Mae McHugh, who, you know, the queen of the ploughing and the backbone of the ploughing today, did join the association. Ireland did host the first World Ploughing Championships in Killarney in 1954, but unfortunately Ireland did not win that um, until 10 years later, where Wicklow man Charlie Keegan uh, did actually win the event in 1964 in Vienna. There has been a rise then, I suppose, by 1975, so you're talking, you know, 30 years after the ploughing had taken place, there was a huge rise in the amount of exhibitors, almost hitting 100. Um, so primarily, they were all agricultural based, but by the 1980s, the event took a huge shift and a more diverse set of exhibitors began to, to be introduced. So just on the exhibitor trade event itself, um, I suppose the attendance then did begin to grow hugely over the years. And in 1988, due to the huge spur of people that was actually at the event, uh, the event got changed to from a one day period to a three day period. And that's still the way it is obviously today. By the mid nineties, the trade show completely blew up. More and more businesses wanted to be involved just to showcase their products or services. 
you know, potential exhibitors from outside the agricultural sector saw the ploughing match as a great opportunity to sell their products and actually meet their, their potential customers. They also wanted to increase brand awareness as well. So obviously being at the event, having your brand out there uh, and meeting the guts of 300,000 people, you know, you're getting to put your brand to the, to the face of the public. So from that, as you can see in the image above here, the ploughing championships did turn into what looks like a tented village. So, you know, which it significantly developed over the years and through the 1990s and into the early noughties, you know, there was a lot more effort put into infrastructure and the roadways for all the exhibitors and attendees uh, that would be there. By 2011, the National Ploughing Championships hosted approximately 250 uh, exhibitors who came from all across Europe and even the USA. So what are the National Plowing Championships like actually today? Well, at the moment, it's one of the largest agricultural events across Europe, and it does cost in excess of 5 million euro just to run it each year. Um, from the plowing aspect, there is actually over now at the present time, about 320 competitors each year just for the ploughing itself. Attendance wise, we're actually looking at about 300,000 people at the event. And at last year's stands, we actually had up to 1,700 exhibitors just at stands alone. This year would have marked the 89th year of the event, but obviously due to COVID-19, it was forced to cancel. So what does the show actually mean for Mukal? Back in 2014, this was the birthplace of where Mukal launched with the, with the cabin sensor. So as you can see, the stand itself did change over the years, um, but it was through absolute work and development that the product managed to get to the success that it is today. It's one of the best places for us to meet new potential business and also to meet our existing customer base. You know, from a storytelling point of view, it's obviously great to understand everyone's success with the product, how they love the Mukal Cabin Sensor. Taking inspiration for our research is obviously one huge thing that we like to get at the event. So understanding, you know, how we could improve the system, different ideas that customers bring to the front, and that all that information is vital to us. Back in 2017 then, it was the launch of the Mukal Heat. And again, we launched that at the National Plowing Championships you know, coming out with a new product to the market is, is a difficult thing and you're trying to create that brand awareness and presence. So the National Plowing Championships was one of the best ways for us to do that. Obviously, the Plowing Championships is known for farmers getting good deals on products and, and getting promotions. So each year we do run offers like this year so that you can save uh, hundreds on, on our systems. You know, it's something that people do avail of year on year and it's something that, you know, I think will continue on into the future. And finally then, freebies. I think everyone will agree that they've gone home with a big bag of goodies at the end of the ploughing and they throw it all out on the kitchen table and see what they'll dump and what they'll keep. But, um, you know, the likes of pens, the likes of air fresheners, all this kind of stuff, we, we always have something on display. So the ploughing championships always has its challenges, but it also always has its rewards. I think one of the biggest challenges that it does face every year is the weather conditions. You know, there's always a challenge around holding down flags or tents or banners. And as you can see from the pictures here, even at the 2017 show, we, we got extreme rain and it managed to flood out our Mukal tent. And there were slurry tanks drawn out water there and they were pumping it even out day and night just to get our tent back to normal. However, when the weather is excellent, you can see there's large volumes of people actually attend the show and it creates a better atmosphere at the event itself. There's a lot of competition between exhibitors. I think each year someone tries to bring something different to the equation to try to bring as much attention to their show or to their tent as possible. It's a massive place for people to bring new innovations and new technologies. Um, I think the innovation arena is one of the best things at the event and I'd urge everyone that does attend to make sure they go in and see what, what at the agribusiness and agri-tech industries are looking to implement for Irish farmers. The last thing is just on the host counties and venues. You know, it always brings challenges with regards to traffic to each place that it is brought to. So having the sufficient levels of, you know, roadways and everything available and fields and parking, it's, it's a huge help for the show's success. 
So finally, what does the show actually mean for Irish agriculture? You know, it has become more than just a day out for everyone, not just farmers. There is literally something for everyone to do, everyone to see, and something new every year. Um, it's the best time to actually showcase your niche service or product face to face with potential or new customers. It's a fantastic place to see demonstrations live. So, you know, whether it's the plowing that you're going looking for, different arts and crafts, all the talents that people bring to the equation. As I mentioned, different innovations, especially for the agri sector, but there are a variety of other sectors that, that do bring innovations forward. Um, obviously, the food sectors, you'll see all the biggest um, supermarket stores that are there giving out free food and um, get, allowing you to experience their products. Also, you'll get to see cooking demonstrations. There's lots of animals on display, whether you're into cattle, sheep, poultry, pigs, there's literally everything. Um, from a sporting aspect, there's always that goals and everyone's trying to hit the target and they're kicking the ball to try to get, get something for free. The weather presenting, people who love to go in and meet a celebrity at the RTE, RTE tent. And there's lots more, lots more for people to do and lots more for people to see. Um, the biggest thing for us, if for Irish agriculture, is it's part of our heritage and obviously part of our culture. So year on year, you know, as I said, the show is getting bigger and people do want to take part each year. There's obviously new companies coming in, getting involved, and, and it's a huge day out for the whole family. So finally, thanks very much for listening to this webinar today. If you'd like to hear any more information on our products or services, you can just give us a call there or visit our website at www.moocall.com. And I'd also like to just give credit to the National Plowing Association for, for a good bit of content in this series. Um, if anyone does have any questions, again, we'll have that live uh, Q&A just on our Instagram page. So just stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to reach out.